Hello and welcome to Bird ID Made Easy with me, Ephraim Perfect. Uh, I'm here today to talk about large shear waters. Um, so things like great shear water and quarry shear water. Um, now they vary in size slightly, so you get the great shear water um, having a wingspan of approximately 105 to 122 centimetres and quarry shear water having a wingspan larger than that uh, which is approximately 118 to 126 centimetres so both very large and you won't really confuse them for any other shear water because of their large size um, so we'll start with the great shear water uh, this one and instantly there's a few diagnostic features which you can really tell with the back of a um, great shearwater and that is the black cap which emphasizes this collar which um, goes around the neck of the bird uh, then you've also got a white upper tail covert here a kind of line across the yeah, upper tail coverts um, which is and these contrasting black and white ID features are always a good thing to look out for uh, when it's distant because those are the things that are going to stand out. Um, now, uh, if you look at the bird, it has a darker back in comparison to a quarry shear water. Um, it has a solid dark bill uh, and like quarry shear water it has these um, slightly drawn back wings at, uh, after the carpal joint um, and uh, oh the wings actually are uh, the wing tips are actually something else to look out for the wing tips are sharper on a great shear water than they are that of a quarry shear water here you can see it's more rounded um, so here we have the underside of a uh, great shear water and again you can see the black cap but this time the extra features are this these auxiliaries here uh, the armpits of the bird and they have these dark lines or these dark parts to the auxiliaries and they at a distance create a kind of smudged effect at the bottom of the wings or at the armpits and um, other features are the dark um, smudge on the belly and the dark vent and dark tail under tail so uh, which you don't get on Cory shear water uh, uh, so at a distance this is another great shear water you can see how I was saying the dark smudge on the belly um, the smudged effect that the auxiliaries have created and the dark uh, uh, the dark tail and vent. Uh, so, and here's another great shear water. One last feature to look out for is actually this smudged thing that you get on the shoulders, which actually emphasise the um, collar. And here we have quarry shear water, which, um, as I was saying, is slightly larger than great shear water. Um, but that's not really something to be looking out for in the field because I don't think it's that noticeably different. Uh, so it has a paler back, as you can tell here. Um, the upper tail coverts on this one only has a, a small area of white. It's not as contrasted and as obvious on the quarry shear water as it is on the great shear water. Um, it also has a large pale yellow bill with a black tip to it and um, uh, but yeah looking at the back you can kind of tell it's kind of quite featureless really compared to that uh, the back of a great shear water um, looking at the underside of a, of a quarry shear water here you can see the head is quite uniformly grey instead of having a kind of capped effect that the um, great shear water has um, the under t the under parts of uh, quarry shear water are also completely white, basically. All they it hasn't got these dark auxiliaries, 
dark smudge on the belly or and its vent is also white and uh so the only part that's really black on the underside of a Cory shearwater is this dark trailing edge on the back of the wings um uh yeah so like the great shearwater actually it also has this um uh this this sweeping wing back after the carpal joint so uh yeah which you can see here and here uh yeah so they so they're kind of flexed back um so here's a core shearwater at a distance as i was saying you can see that the underside is completely white apart from those trailing edges in front um so it won't have that smudged effect the head is um completely gray so it doesn't have a cap and the bill isn't completely dark um and so this is i'll let you try and guess what bird this is uh, I imagine most of you will guess that it's a Cory shearwater, which is actually wrong. <laughs> uh, it's a scopless shearwater. Um, and this is a mega rare bird in Britain, but it's still worth bringing up. Uh, I think there's only been one record in Britain, and that was in 2004 off a, uh, off a silly pelagic, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think... So, uh, so yeah, there's very few accepted records in Britain, and so, um, but it, there's still a uh, there's still a chance of finding one. So, um, so it's not really something you should uh, throw away, really. Um, but uh, the differences between Scopless and Cory Shearwater are very small. So, uh, one of the differences is the it has these white fingers in the uh, in the darks of the primaries uh, underneath, uh, which which can't really see that well in this photo, apart from perhaps on the lower wing. Um, in this photo, you can see it much better. Uh, there's it's got these white fingers, as I was saying, which is the most key, which is the key feature for this. But there is still a lot of variation in scopless shearwater, so it's not it's still not completely accurate, really. So, um, unfortunately, it's almost impossible without a good photo to be able to um, get an accepted record of Scopless Shearwater. Um, other things to look out for are that it has a paler head, supposedly, and paler back, and uh, the, there is a darker kind of W shape on the wings. But other than that, really, it is a very difficult species to um, to find amongst Cory shearwater. Uh, so now, if we look at videos of Cory's and great shearwater, here we have a Cory shearwater. If I skip it to the correct place, um, we have a video of a Cory shearwater which has a slightly more calm and relaxed flight in comparison, and it, um, it does longer glides than uh, than. Great Shearwater, and supposedly, according to something I read, I think it's in the Collins, it said it never gives a hurried or busied appearance like that of a Manx or Balearic Shearwater. Um, eh, let's, in the second video, we have here a Great Shearwater, um, and this has a somewhat of a stiff flight, uh, but it's still difficult to see in this. Quite stormy, so it's doing most gliding. Um, but yeah, it does have a stiffer flight. It's the bird at the front, not the gull at the back. And so there you have it. That should be all the features you really need to be able to properly tell the difference between a Cory's great shearwater and possibly a scopless shearwater. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I hope to make more of these as well. See you later.